This is the lesson that go, is titled Draw a Picture and Write an Equation, and it goes in with homework assignment, practice 4-3. Uh, this assignment, what we worked on is drawing out pictures, obviously, that go with some story problems. Uh, this method, the four box method, was shown to me by Mr. Schreiner a year or two ago. I know they use it in fourth grade. Uh, it makes sense to them. I liked it. It's simple. The kids get it, so I've just kept it going. What it is is basically a graphic organizer that just helps the children along with organizing their thoughts. The first step they do is right up here, and they just write out what is the basic question. That way they can keep a focus on what exactly is it that I'm trying to figure out. Over here in this box is where they might draw a picture, write an equation, just get out the information that they know. Then they move down and this is where they actually do all their work. It's all in one nice box, do the work, and it's easy to do. And then over here is where they write out the full complete sentence for the answer. The nice four steps, again, just keeps the children focused, it keeps them on track, and it helps them work it out step by step. The way we use it, let's do an example, if I can get to it, there we go. If you had a story problem that looked like this, Nina pays $7.50 for lunch for herself and her sister. She has $5.25 left. How much money did Nina have before she bought lunch? Well, the way this graphic organizer works is here we write the question, and the question in this case is how much money did Nina have before she bought lunch? By writing it down, that helps the children focus on every time they look back, that's what they need to be working on, that's what they need to be focused on finding. Now, to draw a picture of this, we go back to the rectangular method that I showed you in the last video. So we're going to draw a rectangle. Now in this case, what we don't know is the total. So this is going to be our variable. What we do know is that she paid $7.50 and she had $5.25 left over. Now again, by drawing this picture out, it again focuses the children on exactly what they do know and what they don't know. So then from here, we can write the equation that we're going to take our $7.50 and we're going to add it to our $5.25 and that's going to lead us to our total. Now, some of your parents, and I do too, I, say, I just tell myself, well, all we need to do is add. And that's great and that's wonderful and that is exactly what the children are doing. But some children need this little picture. It just kind of brings it together and it clicks for them. So that's why we use it. It's nothing off the wall. It's nothing wild, nothing crazy. It just helps organize their thoughts. So now what we're going to come down here and we're going to do our work. So we're actually going to add $7.50 and $5.25. and we get 12.75. And then our last step is we come over here and we write out our answer. Nina had $12.75 before she bought lunch. And that's how the graphic organizer works. So let's try it on another problem. Drew sold lemonade and apples at the school fair. She sold a total of $64. If she sold $21 in lemonade, how many dollars worth of apples did she sell? Well, again, we start with our question. And our question the children need to find is, how many dollars worth of apples did Drew sell? Now if we come over here and we draw a picture, we draw out our rectangle. In this case, we know the total. She total sold a total of $64, so that's going to go up here. 
We know that she sold $21 in lemonade, but what we don't know in this case is how many she sold in apples, how many dollars worth of apples she sold. So this is what our picture would look like. Now from here we could write an equation that says 21 plus x is equal to 64. Now, could the equation also say 64 minus 21 equals x? Absolutely. Both of these answers are correct. It's, they're just in a fact family, and just per, whatever your preference is of working it. Now, if we come down here into this box and we do the work, and of course, being the teacher, I like to review what we did yesterday. In this case, we want the variable by itself. So we're going to subtract 21. And we can do that from both sides. So x is 43. Now, could you also do the 64 minus 21 and get the same answer? Absolutely. I like using this method when I can because, as I told the children in 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th grade, they're going to need to solve these, and they're going to be much harder. So anytime we can practice it now, kind of like riding a bike with training wheels, is good. Now we come over here and we have the answer, and we can write in Drew sold $43 worth of apples. And that's how the graphic organizer works for that problem. One more example. Raquel and Mark want to buy their mom a gift that costs $32.95. Raquel earns $18.20 from babysitting. How much does Mark need to earn to pay for the gift? Well, the question, how much does Mark need to earn to pay for the gift? The picture draw out our rectangle. In this case, we do know the total. We know the total is $32.95. And we know that Raquel earned $18.20. What we don't know, our variable, is what Mark needs to pay. So then we can write out our equation using this picture that 1820 plus x is going to equal $32.95. Or you could say that 3295 take away 1820 is going to give you your unknown. Then we can come down here and do the work. We can have our 1820 plus x equals 3295. Subtract 1820 from both sides. X is 14.75. And again, absolutely, you can just take your 32.95 minus your 18.20. Then over here, you would write out the answer. Mark needs to earn 14.75. To pay for the gift. All right, I hope this makes sense. I hope that kind of clears things up. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.